Let's do it. Well, welcome back to another episode here from the off grid garage. We've got only 1.4 amps outside. Look at this Scottish weather we have. Well, I thought it's rainy, it's misty, it's cloudy outside. I cannot do anything on the roof anyway. Cannot do any work outside. Let's make a video. Thank you so much for all your comments under the last two videos here about me balancing my battery, top balancing my battery again. Get it back into shape. One millivolt deviation at 3.6 volts. That's what everyone wants, right? Uh, yeah, but um, let me explain. I, um, I fully apologize for I fully apologize for not posting a video yesterday. I know I know a lot of you guys are waiting for the daily soap opera here from the off grid garage. Well, let me. Jeez, I look like cat weasel. Ah, much better. Well, yesterday was one of these days. I filmed the whole episode yesterday, but then in the afternoon, I was starting editing the episode. So I sat on my computer, had all my programs open, had all the footage from the camera transferred to the computer. And well, I got really tired. I got so tired, I really fall asleep. That's how good the episode was I filmed. Okay, let, let me show you here. Let me show you here. Here. I had, I had my tripod sitting here filming the whiteboard and I was standing there and just explaining who is watching that really I mean if I already fell asleep what would the audience do I said nah, Andy you've got over 10,000 subscribers now 10,000 people have subscribed to the channel you have to keep a certain standard now with your videos you cannot just sit there next to a whiteboard and explain like a like a school teacher you know this is not what we are doing here on the channel i thought today i redo the whole video and put a lot more practical stuff in there let me um deal with this situation here first Far better situation. They are heavy. Yeah, average Joe does this in his videos all the time. So he's got these fart sounds in there and he's got 35,000 subscribers. So people. Got it. And also we today have seven, seven amps outside, 7.1 amps outside. Much better weather than yesterday. So, well, in regards to the last videos I did here on the channel um, about my battery balancing, top balancing, BMS, one cell was peaking, the whole system shut off because the BMS disconnected the whole battery then. Many, thank you for all your comments, by the way. <laughs> I have read most of them now. Quite a few people have left comments under the video now in regards to balancing and how to do it correctly and, and what to do. So I want to I wanna start here a, a bit controversial. This is almost a religious question I'm asking here. I'm, I'm really looking forward to all the discussions under this video. Okay, well guys, here's the situation. You are going to build a battery. 12 volt battery, four cells, 3.2 volts each. In this case, you get them from your supplier in your, well, they're coming, they're coming usually well packed in this um, foamy, foamy compartment situation, transport thingies here. And you unpack them, you put them on your workbench. The first thing you want to do is you want to balance them, right? So you take your, so you take your bus bars, and connect all the positives together and all the negatives together. You're wondering why this cell is here? Well, you know this cell from past episodes, right? Yeah, exactly, that's the one. Well, I explain this in a second. And by the way, thank you so much to PowerPoll from Victoria for donating these amazing aluminium bus bars again. Laser cut 
aluminium bus bars. Well, guys, I have made a full episode about these bus bars here. Also with, I included all the calculations as well and showed you exactly why these bus bars are far superior to the ones which are coming with the battery cells. So if you want to get your bus bars, I link Paul's Facebook website down below. Get in contact with Paul and he will send you some regardless where you live. And I link this other video down below as well, just in case you want to have a look why these bus bars are so good. Thanks again, Paul, for your generous donation. Well, I think he sold thousands of these bus bars after my last video and he's got another 500 in stock. So you better hurry up if you want them. And then you would connect your, your power supply or your charger to the common negative and to the common positive. And you would probably set a voltage of 3.6 volts and charge up the battery until the, cur until the current is almost zero. This is, this is usually how you start, right? So, and then after you have balanced your pack, you take off all the bus bars and you put them in series. Uh, we start with the negative down here. Positive, negative, negative, okay. All right, and then you take your bus bars and you realize they are actually too short. But never mind, Paul has also the extended version. Either for these cases, if you want to put yourselves in a long row, or if you configure your battery like I have here in two rows and you want to make the connection between the last two. See, I have used this long cable there. Could have used one of these longer bus bars here to connect these two rows together at the end. And here you can see they are slightly longer. But this is exactly what you want. If you have two rows of batteries, this is your connection to connect these two rows together because the normal ones are too short for that. So he's got both of them in stock. Get in contact with PowerPole. Link is down in the description. After you have top balanced all your cells, you put them in series. So you start with your common negative here, then your positive connects to the negative, positive to the negative, positive to the negative. Okay, let me tell you about this cell here. Why I have put this one in here? Well, usually when you get all your batteries, they should be all the same, right? There should be matched internal resistance, capacity, voltage. This is what the seller or the manufacturer always tell you. And well, and then you get them at home and you do your capacity testing and they are not so much the same then. And this is why I have put this smaller battery cell in here. We've got these ones all very close together, but one of them has a lower capacity. You're dealing with individual single battery cells, a tiny bit of different chemistry in there, variation in production. One cell is never the same as the other one. You always have a little bit of tolerances in all these battery cells. And to make things really clear, I have put this smaller battery here in this row, just to symbolize this one has a lower capacity as the other ones. Well, in your case, it might be only a few ampere hours or so. Well, with my last delivery of the 16 cells from Shi Shi Shu, from Kishu, no, Shi Shu or something, I had a difference of about 12 ampere hours across 16 cells. So, and here is usually the situation you find: 280 ampere hours, same, same, smaller capacity. Well, in this case, it's very extreme, but let's go with this one just for an example. 3.6 volt, 3.6 volt, 3.6 volt, 3.6 volt. After balancing, you know, you did the balancing with your power supply. Everything is 3.6 volts and you've got them charged to the maximum state of charge at 3.6 volts per cell. They have, however, different capacities. But this is not what we are looking at. We are looking at the voltage. Voltage is 3.6, right? Okay, so, and now you are putting your battery on duty and start discharging your whole battery. So let's say you're taking 50 ampere hours out and then in the next morning, you, and then you're recharging 50 ampere hours with your solar and all the cells will come up again and meet at 3.6 volts and everything is fine. Because as long as you charge and discharge them slowly, they will always come back up to 3.6 volts and will always have the maximum state of charge at this point of time. 
but, but we all know this is not the reality because if you charge or discharge a little bit faster with higher amps regardless what you do this one here will always discharge or charge faster ah these guys again i tell you so when you put load on this battery this voltage here will always sag a little bit further down than all the other ones because they have got more capacity again this is just an example a very extreme example but you find the same with your weakest cell in your battery pack well and now most likely what will happen is that this cell will hit the 3.6 volts a little bit earlier than all the other ones with a higher capacity and this gets only worse over time so what are we doing rebalancing the whole pack well after a while we can rebalance the battery right we can we can take off all the bus bars again put the cells in parallel positives negatives together and rebalance it to, to 3.6 volts and then put it back in series that's a possibility or we can just connect our wireless bms and let well guys dead. there is nothing like a wireless bms on the market nothing unfortunately not well once you have connected your bms to your battery correctly if you don't know how to do all this i linked the two videos down below where we connect this bms to my 16s battery correctly i explain this in all details so in this case the bms does nothing else than monitor the single cell voltages and if one of the cells is getting too high before the other ones it starts discharging this one cell with these cables to bring them all back together to 3.6 volts and with these high capacity cells well the effect of these small balance currents is not as good anymore so over time the bms may struggle with balancing your whole battery pack and this is exactly what we have seen in one of the last videos where my whole system here shut down one of the cells was too high in voltage and the bms was trying to balance it but it was unable to do it and once this cell hit the critical voltage of 3.65 volts the bms shut off the whole battery and it was it was okay because this is and i think this is one of the main tasks of the bms right it should protect your battery on a high voltage cell or on a low voltage cell and this is why many people well now and this is why 50 percent of the people have said well andy you slap a balancer an active balancer on your battery and you will be fine an active balancer would take the energy of the cell which reaches the 3.65 volts first would take this energy and transfer it through an electronic module into the battery with the lowest voltage so it equalizes your battery pack automatically and these little things are really effective and efficient so there is not much loss in this whole process while here with this classic bms we've got we've got these little resistors here which are just burning off energy of your highest voltage cell so it puts a resistor between the contacts of your cell and transforms this energy into heat well and then your energy is lost of course uh, well unfortunately i haven't got a balancer here to put this here let me quickly see if we have okay let's let's pretend this is our balancer here and we have put this on your on the battery as well and the balancer connects to a similar wire nest here of cables as well to every single cell but it transfers the energy from the highest to the lowest cell and they can actually transfer between one and five amps so this is like 50 to 100 times more than the bms can do the overall advantage of such a balancer is of course you will have the cells all balanced at any point of time because they are not just waiting until the battery is charged like the bms does well these balancers they are doing this all the time so they are watching the cells all the time and balance them out at any point of time another advantage of these active balancer is well if you only have your bms and it only discharges your highest voltage battery very very slowly it keeps this battery here on 3.6 volts for a fairly long time until all the other ones with a lower voltage 
are catching up. And we all know higher voltage means higher degradation in your battery cell. So, and because this is your weakest cell already and you're keeping it on a higher voltage for longer than all the other cells, you're making your weakest cell even weaker. While the active balancer transfers energy out of this high voltage cell very quickly and discharges it and lowers the voltage much quicker than a pure BMS could do. So this helps actually to prevent further degradation of your already weak cell. So that's good, right? That's, that's a good thing. You, you should have a BMS for your security, for your super high voltages or super low voltages. And you should have, there, yeah, you should have a balancer as well. It helps you equalizing your whole pack. And if you read the comments under the last two or three videos, 50% of the people suggest to have a balancer as well. And, well, the other 50% say don't. Because if you have your... Need to raise the voltage here again. Okay, so no active balancer, just the BMS. All the cells are on 3.6. Because if your pack is already nicely balanced and you put an active balancer on this battery now, you're throwing your top balancing out of the window straight away. Because this one here will transfer energy from one cell to another. Usually if you charge this battery here, there's only one current going through all these battery cells. If you charge with 10 amp for one hour, you have increased the state of charge by 10 ampere hours in each of the battery cells. If you put this one on, you don't because it transfers energy from this battery cell into one of the other ones. So you're getting actually an imbalance. And a second thing, or a third thing actually, say if we are taking around 90 ampere hours out of this battery here, all these first three cells here are still fine, but this one is almost completely discharged. So what would happen here? So we've got all the batteries on 3.1 volts now, fairly discharged, while your weakest one is already down to 2.9 volts. With an active balancer now, what would happen? It would transfer energy from these batteries here into this battery, right? To rise the voltage again to 3.1 volts again. It discharges these ones further and lifts this one up. Which, which is good. Is this, this is a good thing. You know, you can, you can keep the battery running while without an active balancer, your BMS would kick in at some stage and at 2.5 volt, the BMS would just disconnect your whole battery. But if you can distribute more energy from these cells with higher capacity into this cell with lower capacity, you can keep your whole battery running longer. You're equalizing the disadvantage of a lower capacity cell. So this is another benefit of an active balancer. Ah, uh, well, and now you may guess it already. What are we doing here then? We are constantly shifting energy in and out of this cell. This is your weakest cell. At a lower voltage, it gets energy from the other cells. At a higher voltage, this one delivers energy to the other cells. So the question here is now, is an active balancer actually putting even more stress on your weak cell? Because it constantly, well, mini nano micro charges, discharges your cell all the time. And remember, this is already your weakest cell. And you're putting more stress on it by constantly having these little charges and discharges. Would this not speak actually against a balancer? Well, and then there's this other group. They say, get rid of your balancing completely. Discharge all your cells to 2.5 volts. Because then you know exactly, well, at 2.5 volts, we know exactly this cell has zero ampere hours. 2.5, zero ampere hours, 2.5, zero ampere hours, 2.5, zero ampere hours. While with the top balancing, while if we charge our battery to 3.6 volts, we don't know how much capacity is in each of the cells. We don't know because top balancing only focuses on the voltage. 
not on the capacity, only voltage focused. This is what the BMS measures, 3.6 volts, regardless how much capacity your single cell has. And then, yeah, there are these people saying, well, do a bottom balance. Discharge all the cells, zero ampere hours, make them all equal, and then connect them back. And, and then connect them back in series and start charging up the battery. And while you are charging your battery, you take your multimeter and you measure all the individual cell voltages while charging it up. As soon as one of your cells hit a critical voltage, like 3.6 volts, you stop charging. You don't absorb, you stop charging. And then you measure the individual cell voltages of each cell, add them together, and this is your overall battery charge voltage. And at this point of time, you have the same capacity in every single cell, regardless of the maximum capacity the cell could actually store. Because charging this battery row with 10 amps now would add 10 ampere hours per hour to each individual cell. Once your weakest one hits 3.6 volt, for example, you know this one is full and this is the maximum capacity every single cell has. They have different voltages, of course, then, because this is... Because with the bottom balancing, we are not focusing on individual cell voltages anymore. We are focusing on the capacity. They all have the same. Well, imagine you have four buckets and they all have slightly different sizes and you're filling them with the same amount of water until the smallest bucket is full. Even if one of the buckets is really, really big, it contains the same amount of water as the smallest bucket, which is full. But the biggest one is maybe only half full. And then when you discharge the battery, because you don't have a BMS, you don't have a balancer connected. You discharge all the cells with the same amps again. So if you discharge your battery with 10 amps, you're taking 10 ampere hours out in one hour, out of every single cell, regardless the maximum capacity they can store. They're all coming together at 2.5 volt and zero amps again. So with this setup, you wouldn't need a BMS because well, there's nothing to balance. You don't need a balance. If this, if this cell is full, you're reaching the overall battery voltage and you stop charging because your weakest cell has reached a maximum capacity of 100 ampere hours. If these have 280, it doesn't matter. They only are being filled with 100 ampere hours each time this one reaches maximum voltage. You may know about Jehu Garcia in the US who is building battery packs for a long, long time. He converted a very old Volkswagen bus to electric and he uses exactly this system. He balances his battery pack, he bottom balances his battery pack and never uses a BMS. If I can find this episode, I'll link it down below. Otherwise, just go into Google and look for his Samba project where he converted this old bus into electric and he explains exactly what he does with his battery pack. And from what I read in the comments, uh, some of you guys with stationary solar storage, you are using the same method at home as well. And you bottom balance your pack and then charge it up until the weakest cell hits 3.6 volts. Don't quote me on 3.6 volts now and then you stop charging. Well, from a safety perspective, you still should have a BMS connected because if your solar charger is not working correctly, you may overcharge your cell and destroy it. While the BMS would disconnect the charger if one of the battery cells gets actually too high in voltage. So from a safety perspective, always have a BMS connected. But in this case, you should turn off the balancing function of your BMS. And of course, you don't need any of these active balances. Well, guys, there you have it. Top and bottom balancing. Meat or fish. Ernie or bird.
I'm sure I have forgotten some of the positives or negatives for each of the variations. So please leave the comments down below. And don't forget to be nice in the comments. I know this is a very controversial and, and almost religious topic to talk about. And it's been discussed everywhere. What should you do? Should you top balance your battery pack or should you bottom balance it? So guys, let me know in the comments down below. What would you do? Would you do a bottom balancing? It looks like... It looks like it's not a bad setup actually. Or do you prefer the top balancing with balancer and BMS? I'm really keen and excited to read your comments for this topic here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you leave a comment down under my video and tell me are you a top or a bottom balance guy and why? As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel, for all the many many beer donations. Stay charged, stay safe, and I'll catch you again in one of the next videos coming out very soon. Thanks for watching again, guys. See you then. Bye-bye.